Hi, everybody. I want to share a few records that I purchased uh, this last weekend at the, the Nanaimo Record Show. Nanaimo is about an hour and a half drive north of Victoria on Vancouver Island. It was the first record show we've had on the island in about three years, so it was pretty well attended. Uh, it was about 100,000 records there. Sounds like, looked like it anyway. Uh, sadly, I'm not kidding, six classical records, of which I bought five of them, and a couple of very good jazz vendors. If you're a classic rock fan, you're in heaven. Anyway, there's another one coming up in Victoria, uh, May 1st. I'll do another report then. Hopefully, I'll have a few more that I can share with you. I hope that this is not too self-indulgent. There's too many of these videos these days, people doing questions and answers and things. But I thought you guys might be interested to see that uh, even just, I think it's 10 uh, records, they're actually, uh, I, was, I lucked out with some really wonderful records here. So let's go through them. And um, there's five, I think five jazz and five classical. And uh, I've listened to them all. And I've been very lucky. They're very good pressings. So uh, even though the, the trip was an hour and a half, it's a very beautiful drive. Um, it was worth it. Got some great records. So here we go. The first one is One Flight Up with Dexter Gordon, with Donald Byrd, trumpet, Kenny Drew, Niels Henning Orsted on bass when he was 17 years old, and Art Taylor. This was recorded by Blue Note in... Paris, I think it was. Uh, notes by Leonard Feather. Um, quite detailed notes. Uh, one whole track on side one, Tanya by Donald Byrd, the great trumpet player, Manhattan School of Music, and Nadia Boulanger, and a uh, great career. And then two tracks on the second side. This is beautiful 1964 straight ahead jazz with Dexter Gordon's gorgeous tenor sound and a uh, very fine recording. This is an interesting one by Stanley Tarantine. It's called Daily Beloved. Also pretty early 60s. Uh, Japanese pressing, Toshiba EMI. Uh, this one was quite expensive. The first one was about 25 bucks. These are all Canadian prices. This was about 50, about the going rate. Another blue note. But you can see the Toshiba EMI. Very interesting setup. Uh, first of all, Stanley Tarantine, I didn't know much about his playing. Of course, I've heard of him. And it was a really superb sax player. Uh, straight, ahead sax, uh, straight ahead jazz, again, much like Dexter Gordon. Uh, notice the, the accompaniment, Ray Brooks on drums, but Little Miss Cot. And um, that turned out to be his wife uh, because of contractual obligations. Um, Shirley Woods, I think it was, is her name, uh, plays uh, Hammond B3 organ. And this is a wonderful record, very beautiful to play, uh, recorded. Um, I think, yeah, it's a Rudy Van Gelder recording. So that's worth looking for, if you can find it. Dearly Beloved. I bought this one because I've heard... Nothing but good things about Oliver Nelson's big band. This is a live recording, um, Japanese pressing again, but uh, original ABC Impulse and Gatefold. Nice big Gatefold um, record. Pretty well who's who of LA players from, I think this is early, I think this is 67. Um, some of the Tonight Show band, when they moved to LA, you can see Conti Condoli on trumpet. Tony Tack was the bass trombone player. He used to do all the funny dances on uh, Stump the Band with Johnny Carson. Jack Nimitz on baritone sax, Ed Thickpen drums. Fantastic group. And it's very well played. It's quite well recorded live. It's not the greatest uh, record of big band I've ever heard. Around 67 this was recorded. And uh, at that time, I think Maynard Ferguson was uh, recording with his incredible English stage band, which I like a lot better. But it's not bad. If you find, if you see it, and I think it was about 25 bucks. It's worth it. There's the bank. Very interesting one from Art Pepper. Uh, the way it was. This is actually a compilation that <clears throat> Art Pepper uh, did with a contemporary. 
I think the originals were recorded in 1957, and that was with Wayne uh, Warren Marsh, a tennis sax player. And these guys basically trade twos or fours back and forth between the left and right. Uh, sh- Wayne's on the left and I's on the right um, throughout most of the part, the, the uh, charts. They're very good. Um, and then to fill that out, he put together, uh, he added a couple more charts. Uh, Autumn Leaves, um, that was recorded in 1960. And then also The Way You Look Tonight, um, 1960. And these notes, are the, by the way, the, in, the, in the lineup is different, including his favorite people, what Paul Chambers bass, Jimmy Cobb drums, and Winston Kelly piano. Um, the notes, by the way, are by Art Pepper with Laurie Miller, who wrote um, the uh, biography of Art Pepper. If you never read it, uh, it's called, I think it's called Straight Time. It's harrowing, but a brilliant, brilliant book to read. This is... Again, it's Art Pepper, beautifully played with them, um, very well recorded. And I think it may have started as a mono record and been uh, figured for stereo. It's quite centered, but it's, uh, it's a nice sound. Thank you. If you can find that, it was about 25 bucks. This is the final jazz one. And of course, I should have had that. This one, this is a classic. Out of the Cool, Gil Evans, recorded in 1960, if you believe it. He was very specific, a, a really brilliant jazz arranger, pianist, originally from Canada. He had a very specific way of lining up the musicians. And you see some of them there, Bob Tricorico on bassoon, flute and piccolo. Uh, and the, the rhythm section, Ray Crawford, guitar, Ron Carter, the great Ron Carter on bass, and Elvin Jones, you can't get better than Elvin Jones, on drums. In the center section, and then the, the trombones on the left and the saxes on the right. And it's quite representative as far as listening on my system. And uh, it sounded really good. Um, again, the uh, the charts are quite famous. La Nevada, Where the Flamingo Flies, Where the Flamingos Fly, Bilbao Song by Kurt Weill, and others. This is a, a great one. And this is a Canadian pressing. It cost about $25. It's very, very good. Uh, Impulse, if you can find that. I'm sure many of you have that in your in your collection anyway. And now to the classical. And this was interesting because uh, the gentleman had classical there. He had six classical records, all Deutsch gramophone. I, uh, I bought five of them. I didn't fancy the Grieg concerto. Um, but these are all wonderful early 70s. Uh, Deutsche Grandfone, nice pressings. One was a bit damaged, but uh, for the most part, they're pretty good. This is Haydn's String Quartet from late in his life. He wrote them when he was 65 years old. His opus 76, there's five of them. Or six of them, I should say. Um, this is D major and E flat major. This is the Amadeus Quartet. A very, very uh, long time. They were together a long time. Got a big article coming up about these guys and others. Um, about the Tom's top string quartets. This is with uh, Norbert Brainin and Sigmund Nissel, Peter Shittloff and Martin Lovett. I'll tell you another time a Norbert Brainin story, but he was a, he was a, an adjudicator at a competition at Trinity when I was there in 1977 to 81. And interesting character. Let's just say very high standards and not a great sense of humor. Anyway, that's a, that's worthy. It's uh, they're all, It's been re, uh, redone on CD, and um, you can get this for you about ten bucks. This was about eight dollars. This is a real find for me. Um, of course, everyone who loves violin loves Milstein. He's a fantastic violinist. I misread this, and I thought it was the Tchaikovsky comp- uh, Tchaikovsky uh, concerto. Oh well, no problem. Put it on and open up the, uh, put it on. I heard the first bar, I went, whoops, that's Brahms. And uh, not only Brahms, it's a fantastic performance of the Brahms by, by Milstein. And of course, it's got the Vienna Philharmonic, which is a great Brahms orchestra. The recording is very good, but there's a secret weapon here. And that's Eugen Joachim, who's about the best Brahms conductor around. And this is a, a glorious uh, collaboration. You know, everybody thinks about Heifetz and Reiner in Chicago. Uh, when you think of the Brahms, and it's pretty well unsurpassable. But this is very, very good. And the, the, the um, some of the playing and the recording of the violin 
in the cadenza of the first movement is pretty spectacular. I think Milstein was 71 when he recorded this, and he still had his chops right I mean, into his 80s. So I just don't think, uh, you know, as he's older, it's, it's gonna, he's going to lose his edge because he certainly doesn't. This is well worth looking for. It's only five bucks. Uh, when I was at Trinity, this is a, a, a much beloved recording by Claudio and the Boston Symphony. Getting it onto Hearing on My System, which is very resolving if you've watched my reference system. It's an interesting recording. I'm not sure the George Gramphone guys knew how to record that well, especially with this producer in Symphony Hall in Boston. Uh, in the 50s and the 60s with Munch and with uh, Monteur, the orchestra sounds much clearer, much cleaner in the acoustic, which is, of course, one of the top two or three halls in the world. What they do is they bring the, the stage out farther into the, and take the seats out and record from maybe near the center of the hall and uh, with great results, of course. But this one, it's, it's really um, reticent. You need a really big volume crank to get anything out of it. And it's very beautifully played, don't get me wrong. The Boston Symphony with the Bardo, a pretty formidable combination. And Daphne and Chloe has got the great, uh, um, the great flute solo in it and um, all played so beautifully. But it's odd, an odd perspective. The nocturnes and the nuage, like the, 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 the clouds are, are wafting by you, but you're like, are they there? It's, and um, Fett, if you know Fett at all, is very difficult piece to play, but boy, Claudio Abado takes it at a real clip. So not the most, uh, not the best Deutsche Grand Front Round, but it's, it's, you know, if you like Claudio, which I do, and the Boston Symphony, which I do, it's good to have. It's the, well, the flute player, by the way, is Dorio Anthony Dwyer, who's one of the first female principals and one of the greatest flute players ever in American orchestras. This is much like the uh, Amadeus Quartet, pretty standard George Grandphone. This is Berlin Philharmonic with Karl Berm, the great Karl Berm, doing Schubert's Symphonies Number no. 1 and 2. Schubert wrote his first symphony when he was 16 and his second symphony when he was 17. Not bad. <laughs> Lovely playing, very nicely recorded, typical Berlin Karl Berm. Can't go wrong with that. About eight bucks. And finally, this was a real find. Um, Michael Tilson Thomas, very early in his career, uh, the maestro is not feeling very well um, and has had um, um, some treatments for cancer. I'm hoping he's uh, on the mend. Um, I know he's starting to conduct again and uh, get well soon, maestro. But he's had an incredible career with the San Francisco Symphony, the LSO. And early on in his career with the Boston Symphony, where he made some legendary recordings, and this is one of them, and 1970-71. Um, Interesting, same composer, same label, same hall, same orchestra, different conductor, and more importantly, a different producer. And the sound from this recording is streets ahead of the Abado one. The Boston Symphony are far more in the, in, in the front. Uh, the mix is better. And of course, the playing is equally as good. And of course, one more time we get uh, Dorio Anthony Dwyer playing Prelude La Premedie d'un Fon, which he plays magnificently. This is a very fine recording. Equal to his Ride of Spring he did with the same forces, Michael Tilson Thomas. Anyway, get well soon, Maestro. And that's it for me today. I um, hope your vinyl collecting is getting better now that we have um, getting back into some shows after the pandemic. Hope you're all feeling well and safe wherever you are. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. <music>